maintenance fluid therapy is my today's topic maintenance intravenous fluids are used in a child who cannot be fed enterally along with maintenance fluids children may require concurrent replacement fluids if they have continued excessive use as may occur with drainage from energy tube or with high urine output because of diabetes insipidus for example if dehydration is present the patient also needs to receive a deficit replacement maintenance fluids are composed of a solution of water glucose sodium and potassium this solution has the advantage of simplicity long shelf life low cost and the compatibility with peripheral IV administration plus such a solution accomplishes the major objectives of maintenance fluids patients lose water sodium and the potassium in their urine and the stool and also water is also lost from the skin and the lungs maintenance fluids replace those losses thereby avoiding the development of dehydration and the sodium and the potassium deficiency the goals of maintenance fluid include preventing dehydration preventing electrolyte disorder and the ketoacidosis and also decreasing protein degradation the glucose in maintenance fluids provides approximately 20% of normal calorie needs of the patient prevent the development of starvation ketoacidosis and diminish the protein degradation that would occur if the patient receives no calories glucose also provides added osmols thus avoiding the administration of hypotonic fluids that may cause hemolysis of red blood cells maintenance fluids do not provide adequate calories protein fat minerals or vitamins this fact is typically not problematic for a patient receiving IV fluids for a few days a patient receiving maintenance IV fluids is receiving inadequate calories and they will lose 0.5 to 1 percent of weight each day TPN should be used for children who cannot feed entirely for more than a few days especially patients with underlying malnutrition prototypical maintenance fluid therapy does not provide electrolytes such as calcium phosphorus magnesium and the bicarbonate for most patients this lack is not problematic for a few days a child with proximal renal tubular acidosis was this bicarbonate in urine such a patient will rapidly become acidemic unless bicarbonate is added to the maintenance fluid it's important to remember the limitation of maintenance fluid therapy so we can calculate maintenance fluid either daily or hourly daily for the first 10 kg 100 ml per kg for the next 11 to 20 kg 50 ml per kg for each kg and for more than 20 kg 20 ml per kg for each kg above 20 kg plus 1500 ml and also there is another hourly maintenance water rate preparation as you see on the uh, table the maximum total fluid per day is normally 2400 ml so it's this calculation is not above this daily requirement when we see the composition of intravenous solutions that are uh, commonly available normal saline has sodium and the chloride whereas ringer lactate has sodium around 130 milliequivalent per liter chloride around 109 milliequivalent per liter and additionally potassium calcium and lactate are in ringer lactate a normal plasma osmolarity is 285 to 295 milliosmol per kg infusing an IV infusion or IV solution peripherally with much lower osmolarity can cause water to move into red blood cell leading to hemolysis thus IV fluids are generally designed to have osmolarity that is either close to or above 285 milliosmol per kg so we can give half G5 and half NS with 20 milliequivalent per liter potassium chloride which has osmolarity of around 472 and half d5 has with that of uh, 0.2 ns has osmolarity of around 346 we can't give half uh, 0.2 percent ns as a maintenance fluid alone because the osmolarity is much lower than that of the peripheral iv solution osmolarity Maintenance fluids usually 
contains D5, which provides 70 calories per 100 ml and the nearly 20% of daily calorie needs. This level is enough to prevent ketone production and help minimize protein degradation, but the child will lose weight on this regimen. The weight loss is the principal loss why a patient needs to be started on TPN after a few days of maintenance fluids if interact feedings are still not possible. Maintenance fluids also lacking in such crucial nutrients as protein, fat, vitamins, and the minerals. Regarding selection of maintenance fluids, an isotonic fluid such as normal saline and linger lactate with 5% dextrose and KCL decided if the selected fluid is normal saline is recommended for maintenance fluids. Surgical patients typically receive isotonic fluids either in or linger lactate during surgery and in the recovery room for 6 to 8 hours postoperatively. Subsequently, maintenance fluids have the addition of 5% dextrose with KCL. Electrolytes should be measured at least daily in all children receiving more than 50% of maintenance fluids. But overall, treatment is individualized and the careful monitoring is critical. Neonates are outside the scope of this and children with renal insufficiency may be hyperkalemic or unable to excrete potassium and they may need um, potassium-free fluids. They may not tol tolerate addition of potassium. Patients with persistent ADH production because of underlying disease process should receive less than maintenance fluids. Children with meningitis are fluid restricted unless intravascular volume depletion is present. The calculation of maintenance water is based on a standard assumption regarding water loses. In some patients, however, these assumptions are incorrect. So it is helpful to understand the source and the magnitude of normal water loose. The most important contributor to normal water loose is urine, which is responsible around 60%, and insensible loses are the second. 75% and the stool is the least one. Insensible loses are composed of evaporative loses from the skin and the lungs that cannot be quantitated. The evaporative loses from the skin do not include sweat, which would be considered an additional or sensible source of water loose. Maintenance fluid needs may be increased or decreased depending on the clinical situation. Burns can result in massive loss of water and electrolytes, and there are specific guidelines for fluid management in children with burn. Sweet loses of water and electrolytes, especially warm climate, can also be significant. Children with cystic fibrosis and some children with pseudohypoaldosteronism have increased sodium loses from skin. Prolonged fever increases evaporative loss from the skin, leading to 10 to 50% increase in maintenance water needs for each 1 degree Celsius increase in temperature above 38 degrees Celsius. Tachypnea or tracheostomy increases evaporative loss from the lungs. A humidified ventilator causes decrease in sensible loss from the lungs and they can even lead to water absorption via the lungs. So a ventilator patient has decrease in maintenance fluid requirement. This is all about maintenance fluid. Thank you for watching.